Saturday, Melrose Mountain, Tryon, North Carolina. You know, the birth of Jesus was an amazing event. I mean, the fact that he was born of a virgin, the uh, fact that uh, he was the Messiah. But there's some other interesting stories connected with the birth of Christ that sometimes we fail to really look at in any detail. Uh, one is Zacharias. You remember he was an elderly priest, faithful, and been ministering for a long time. And an angel came to him and said to him, and this is in Luke chapter 1, uh, said to him that he was going to have a child and uh, that his son would be very special. But he doubted. And he said, how can I know this for sure? And the angel said, because you doubted, uh, you're not going to speak until after the child is born. Now, you say, well, why is that so interesting, Pastor? And I, I would say to you, it's very interesting because the first thing that any prospective father wants to do when he finds out that his wife is pregnant is to tell everybody. And Zacharias, because of his disbelief, was prevented from that exciting time of telling all your friends that your wife's going to have a baby. Well, that's not all that there is to the story. You see, because after John was born, uh, the angel had said, you're going to name him John. And so when Elizabeth uh, was asked what to name the child when it was born, she said, John. And they said, well, nobody in the family's name is John. And so they turned to Zacharias, who hadn't been able to talk all of those uh, pregnancy months. And uh, this is on the circumcision day, which is eight days after the birth. He's obviously still not able to speak. And so when they ask him what they should call a child, uh, he writes on a little board, John. He's now obedient, not doubting. And guess what happens? He's able to speak. You say, well, why is all of that so interesting, Pastor? It's interesting because many times uh, the problems that we suffer as a result of our sin are very appropriate for the offense. The offense was disbelieving the birth of a child. The punishment was not being able to announce the birth of that child. Not being able to tell his friends that his wife was expecting. Not being able to tell everybody, it's a boy, it's a boy. Interesting, isn't it? Next time you're suffering circumstances, ask yourself, am I suffering these circumstances just because God never would immune us from all problems? Or... Am I suffering these circumstances because of something that I've done? And is this punishment appropriate for what I've done? It's an interesting thought, isn't it? Well, there's a second part of the story that I want you to see in the birth of Jesus, uh, besides the actual birth itself and the miraculous nature of that. And that's a guy named Simeon. It's also found in Luke chapter 2, and beginning at about verse 25. Simeon states that he has been promised by the Holy Spirit not to see death before he has seen the Lord's Christ, the Messiah. And when Jesus' parents bring Jesus to be circumcised, guess what? Simeon takes him into his arms and he says, I can depart now in peace. I've seen thy Savior. Of light of revelation to the Gentiles, and the glory of the people of Israel. I love that passage of scripture. Here's this faithful servant who didn't doubt. Even though he was getting way up in years and he'd been waiting a long time, God had made him a promise that he wouldn't depart before he saw the Christ. And just as God is always faithful to all of his promises, he got to hold the Messiah, the Christ, the Savior of the world. Waiting? Thinking that maybe God has promised you something you haven't yet received? Be patient. Simeon was, and he was able to depart in peace because he saw the salvation of the Lord. It's your thought for the day. God bless you. Don't forget to go to church tomorrow.